Alan Turing was a mathematician whose greatest claim to fame was as an awesome codebreaker during World War II. Before that, he did another awesome thing. Turing was laying out in a field, staring up at the sky, when he thought up a thing called the Turing machine, and so conjured up the computer we know today. So this very long strip of paper went on forever, rolling from one spool to another through a machine. The machine could write ones and zeros or blanks to embed commands like Morse code, a spool of paper that is readable and writable, and most important, infinitely long, so you could write infinitely crazy commands. The Turing machine had a reading writing part, the state register, think of it as the state of mind the machine gets put in by the command, and a set of instructions telling the machine to read, write, or move. Once you record a string of numbers that makes one machine work, you can plug those numbers into another machine and make it work just like the first. One way of looking at it is you can play many games on one computer instead of needing an arcade. You could do all kinds of problems with logic, anything from solving Nazi codes to tracking weather patterns to sequencing the genome of the giant extinct mammoth. All kinds of hard problems could be given to machines to do automatically while we got onto other things. Turing loved to think that it would be only a matter of time for machines to be as smart as us. As it turns out, computers kind of suck at something we're really good at, called inference, which is why a machine still cannot grasp why a rope can be used to pull something, but not push it. Why a computer can beat chess champions, but should not be allowed to babysit your kid. The Turing machine was a concept, not an actual machine. But now the term Turing complete is used to describe any computer running a simulation of what he imagined. Oh, check out these buttons. Go to DIY to get the cryptographer skill. Okay, thanks, bye.